him and the leadership is incredible, you know, and one of my biggest goals in coaching and my career is to be a part of a staff that wins national championships and wins trophies. And, you know, when knowing the leadership that we have in place right now and knowing coach Jones on a personal level. So I wrestled on the national team when he was the national team coach. So I have had prior relationships with him as well as the real, you know, some other real incredible things. My wife's both of her parents graduated from Arizona State, lived there for a while. Uh, they currently are living in Henderson, Las Vegas. My father-in-law actually wrestled for Bobby Douglas at Arizona State. And just real quickly, you know, I want to say one thing about Bobby Douglas because he's always been kind of, you know, a hero in terms of wrestling icons and people that have innovated wrestling and people that have taken wrestling to the next level. And, you know, Bobby won a national championship in 1988. I was born in 1988. Bobby Douglas coached the only undefeated wrestler. He coached me, and now I'm back at Arizona State. So call me nuts, but I believe everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I know the ending, which is to win national championships. So I'm looking for the signs, and all the signs are there. You know, it has great leadership. Um, you know, Zeke's been a great influence in my, my career and my life, and that's the biggest thing. Another thing, too, is it's an incredible opportunity. You know, the kids on the team – just watching them last season, you know, watching Ja'Cory Teamer and Anthony Valencia and, you know, watching Arizona State knock off Penn State's dual meet win streak. I mean, they were about to break Iowa's um, win streak that had lasted for years, you know, and Arizona State blew that out of the water in front of 15,000 fans, you know, and, and that was a huge milestone. I think, you know, even though it's my alma mater, I'll say this, you know, I'd want nothing more than to beat Penn State. And this is the place to beat Penn State. You know, I think Arizona State is a kryptonite. You know, Bubba Jenkins, Aaron talked about him before. He left and he went to Arizona State and he pinned the Golden Boy in the national finals. You know, you saw Anthony Robles. You saw him dominate another Big Ten guy. And that's kind of my vision for the program. That's what I hope to bring here is when people wrestle in Tempe and people wrestle Arizona State, not only will they be wrestling the most talented wrestlers and the most skilled wrestlers out there, but, you know, they're going to be wrestling some tough dudes. And, you know, when they wrestle us in Tempe next year and the years to come, they're not going to want to wrestle us anymore. They're going to look for a reason to get us off their schedule and avoid us till NCAA tournament. So I want to bring that toughness that's really kind of gotten me to the point where I am today. You know, I think mental toughness is one of my strongest suits and, that's something that I hope I can show the kids on the team and, you know, lead by character and just lead by being consistent and also work ethic, you know, just trying to, trying to bring my work ethic over here. And um, so those are two big things, work ethic and toughness. And I want to be in a position where we can win national championships. So, you know, that's, that's where I'm at right now. And I'm just really excited. We're trying to transition as quickly as possible. And uh, the one last thing that I'll say is, you know, with, when this quarantine uh, hit, the biggest impact it had on me was, you know, everything in your life can be taken away from you in a second's notice. You know, it's been a bad tragedy. People are losing their lives and their family. And I'm treating this opportunity at Arizona State like my family's life depends on it. So, you know, quarantines definitely put things into perspective for me. And I have an incredible opportunity. And I just look forward to meeting everyone and meeting all the people. And, you know, thanks. Thanks so much for everyone that's reached out already, and let's go. I'm ready. All right, Fran, thank you. That was uh, – we're, we're, we will have more questions for you down the line. Um, we will – so as we're going to do this, we're going to run up with a little quarantine update with our six athletes that are here right now. So you six that are out there, I'm going to call you out on some things, and um, we'll probably go in weight class order. But – I don't know if everyone knows who is here right now. We have Brandon Courtney, Ja'Cory Teamer, um, Anthony Valencia, Cordell Norfleet, Tanner Hall, and uh, two-time All-American Josh Shields. So, guys, I will, uh, I'll be asking you guys questions. Um, first of all, let's start, with, uh, let's start with Brandon Courtney. Brandon, what are you yep. doing? Where are you right now? Are you stuck in Arizona? Are you home with your parents? And uh, how is this quarantine treating you? And, and what are you doing to kind of stay entertained? 
uh, I'm uh, I'm easily entertained. So um, games, uh, I mainly play a lot of games. I work out a lot too because uh, my little brother, I do, I'm training him. Uh, hopefully, be a Sun Devil one day. And uh, I'm here in Arizona in Goodyear with my parents. I've been staying here for the last week and a half. And yeah, that's uh, I've been playing a lot of basketball too. So basketball. My, basketball I yeah. Uh, my parents went and got me a bike and a basketball hoop, so I've been I've been having fun. Not gonna uh, lie. Schooling online has that been a little different for you? Uh no. Uh, all my classes were online before the quarantine, so uh, it's the same. Okay. Doing good. Okay, let's uh, let's move to Jacory Tamer. Jacory, where are you? Where are you currently right now? Um, I'm currently in Tempe. I didn't go home to New York because New York is pretty bad right now with the quarantine stuff. So I stayed here. And like I've been working out constantly and doing my schoolwork online. Same with Brandon, nothing changed. All my classes are online, so I'm just getting it done. Where are you? Uh, are you in a house or an apartment? Um, yeah, it's a little cottage. It's a cottage, yeah, with four people. Cordell's my roommate, so he's back there. <laughs> you guys can can pummel together and stuff. Yeah. Dirty pool wrestling going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and how are academics going for you? I know you uh, you love school, so it's probably online. It's probably awesome for yeah, you. Yeah, it's online, so it's pretty much the same. Nothing changed. Nothing changed there. All right. Anthony Valencia, where are you at? Right here. Anthony, what have you been doing? Where are you right now? Are you here in Tempe still? I'm in Tempe, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I took a few days off once the season was canceled. Um, but after a few days of rest, I started getting back to work like very lightly. Uh, one thing that I noticed is uh, the hardest part is the discipline, uh, getting yourself up in the morning to do your workouts and make it mandatory. It's been, it's been a little tough since it's not mandatory, so I get to decide when to work out. Uh, just recently, like a couple of days ago, I just decided I'm gonna start setting an alarm in the morning, work out first thing in the morning, um, and get that out of the way, make, making sure I do it. Um, you know, I mean, I've been I've been reading some books, watching movies, um, and I mean, just making my time worthwhile. You been, you you added your uh, you changed your Instagram name to Air Valencia. Is that is that? Yeah, I felt like I needed to change it. People didn't really understand my other username. They couldn't they couldn't really figure it out. So went there, huh? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to Cordell Cordell Northley. Where are you? Formerly of Chicago, Illinois, you're still here in Tempe, obviously. Yeah, I'm still here in Tempe. Uh, I went back home actually for like a week, but it was pretty dry. Like this quarantine basically has everyone indoors. So I came back and uh, yeah, I'm actually just upstairs in Tempe in my apartment. So that's that. Are you able to get workouts in? Just just hitting push-ups? No, so, okay. so like workouts, look, you got to like make home improvements. So me and Ja'Cory, we just run like all throughout Tempe. Like every morning we run probably two to three miles just anywhere up and down university. So if you're ever driving out there and you see us, you can wave and say hi. But And the room, the room shut down. Am I, am I correct there, Zeke? I mean, obviously these guys know the code to get in, but... Yeah, all the facilities are closed. Actually, Aaron, just the quick piece of that was, they can't come in the room, it's closed. So they, I told them to go take all the equipment out of the room and take it home. So right now, a lot of our equipment is in their homes uh, so they can do as much as they can until we can bring it all back and get back to work. I think you're, you muted, Aaron. There you go. Still muted. There you are. Do all alumni get that same uh, that same luxury? No, all the alumni they have to uh, go to their they have to do their. Well, and I think what, another thing that you hit on before Zeke or, or before when we talked earlier is ASU athletics is providing meals meals to go for the athletes. Are any of you guys any of you uh, athletes right now taking advantage of that? Where you pick up you have lunch or breakfast and lunch if I'm if I'm correct. Uh, sometimes I do. But my, I have it pretty, pretty good here. I, when my parents they cook for me, I'm spoiled over here. So <laughs> whenever I need something, they get it for me. Tell, tell them how much you weigh, Brandon. Tell them how much you weigh. I weigh one thirty. <laughs> I'm getting up to like one thirty one right now. Wow. That's heavy for you. That's heavy, yeah. That's heavy. 
All right, let me move it. Let me move on here to uh, to our senior now, Josh Shields. Josh, you're out there. Um, let me know how it's going for you. This this are, are you still here, finishing your classes up, or did you head back to Pennsylvania? No, I'm still here in Arizona, finishing up my classes. And uh, like Zeke said, he gave us some equipment uh, for some of the seniors who graduated, and so I'm still able to work out um, at my home here in Tempe, which is nice. Um, and just like Cordell and Jacory still running around all over the place but uh no yeah it's good finishing up i only have two classes which is really nice um so i'm just kind of catching a case of the senioritis but also staying sharp and getting ready to make an olympic run well that, and that's just it too is is i think you just got to move on to bigger and better things we're going to get back to more questions involving your senior year um let me bring in a guy who i think when i was a senior he was a freshman at asu um Tanner Hall is our heavyweight. He's been around for a, how long have you been wrestling at ASU now, Tanner? Been couple 20 decades. years? Yeah, a couple decades. <laughs> Tanner and I have had, we got a little history. Yeah, a little bit of history. You came so, in the room every now and then. We, we, we uh, put it on each other a little bit. I don't know about if I did anything to you, but anyway, <laughs> Tanner, what, um, how, how's this going, this quarantine going for you? Obviously, you're here in Arizona too and, and figuring things out. Yeah, I mean, uh, so I'm in my master's program right now for electrical engineering, and I'll be finished with it at the end of this semester, so I'll graduate with my master's. Um, that being said, you know, being a, an electrical engineer, I'm not unaccustomed to spending a lot of time sitting there staring at a computer screen, so the quarantine hasn't been terrible for me because it's just kind of like normal life when I go and sit in a lab a lot of the times. But, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, like, working out and stuff, you know, it's just waking up in the morning, doing what you can with what you got. Um, you got to get creative sometimes a little bit here and there, but, um, fortunately my, uh, before the whole quarantine thing started, my brother came down from, uh, up in Prescott. So me and him have each other to kind of work out with and do things together with. So that helps a lot. Now, um, I know a lot of people, have, 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 you know, we, we went through a lot of issue where, and, and Zeke, I'd like you to possibly hit on this, but the NCAA possibly granting another year or two seniors who uh who didn't get to compete in their ncaa tournament and they are doing that for the spring seasons but not for uh, for our winter sports there's a rumor and i heard that that you would have said no nah, man i don't want another year but is that is there any truth to that you know i didn't even i just i looked at it like this you know that that's such a a huge decision i said i'm not even going to consider what the implications of that decision until i have that decision to be made because there's so much that rides on that choice you know especially with um, you know, incoming freshman like Colton, you know, if I decide to stay next year, what do we do at heavyweight? That becomes a real interesting situation there. Um, and so, you know, while my heart was broken that I didn't get to compete my, my senior year at NCAAs, cause you know, that's all you train for you. You're always told, you know, all it's NCAAs, it's postseason, That's all that matters. Um, at the same time, I guess I do, um, to a degree, understand why the NCAA didn't do it in that aspect. But um, it, it's still, of course, a huge disappointment that we didn't get to do that our senior year, especially. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't imagine having to lose my senior year. It brings me to uh, Josh Shields. Josh, I kind of want you to chime in on that. Um, like when you got the news, like the and, and you know the heartbreak that, that we all felt for you and uh, and and for the uh, for any of the seniors and really any of the seniors nationwide. Like I can't imagine what that must have been like. Um, how what did it take for you to cope with that and, and how'd you switch your mindset? Josh Shields. Uh I think I lost you there. But but um yeah, it was it was brutal. You um ever since I was a kid, about five or six years old, that was the dream, NCAA champ. And so uh for that to be lost, you know, there's a lot of processing that needs to happen. Um but you know, I was you know, I was I was ready for for a moment like that because in wrestling at ASU we talk about how you know wrestling is really important but it's not everything in your life and so when that got pulled for me my senior year um it's not like that was my only crutch I was leaning on and so I'm thankful for Zeke's leadership and the life training that we do um because when that crutch of wrestling was pulled on me um it wasn't the only thing I was leaning on and I had my faith and I had my family and my friends uh to rely on so wrestling is important but it wasn't everything for me um but you dream of it since you're a little kid. And so there's definitely a heartbreak there. Um, but when uh, all is said and done, you know, if one life is saved by this, then in the grand scheme of things, we're all fighting the same battle. So there's a lot of mixed emotions about it. Yeah, man, I, 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 like I said, I can't imagine if that happened to me. And I know 
everyone on this board, like felt for you guys and, and ugh, it's, it's sickening to even think about. Um, and really, and I, I think about that for, for Zeke and for the coaching staff, because, you know, you guys were brought in, you were the, you were the, the freshman class that was going to put us on the map that was going to get us a national title. And, and, and honestly, I felt like we were going that route, especially, you know, beating Penn State and, and, and being in attendance there. And I'm sure everybody that is here today was in attendance at the, to me, the greatest duel that, that I'd ever seen um, in Arizona State history. And I was a part of some pretty cool ones, some comeback victories, and, but nothing like that. Um, Zeke, maybe you want to touch on that a little bit, because I felt like this was our year to, to possibly contend for a national title. You know, things had to go right. We, we did have the issue with Zahid pulling out there. Um, and not getting to compete, but you know, I, I felt like Anthony was going to step in there and become an All-American. I mean, everyone that you were taking, I felt like it was going to bring home some hardware, and if not, get to the finals and win a national title. Yeah, I mean, we, Aaron, it, we've been targeting five years for this season. Uh, obviously, Josh and, and Tanner, Sahid, Anthony, Maruka, you know, and the whole crew, they were all focused. We had put all our time and focus on that number one recruiting class senior year. Uh, knowing that was a chance we could make a run with all the other kids that we had put into the lineup. Uh, we, without Zahid, we still had six guys seated in the top nine in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, if everybody goes in and gets on top of the podium, seven All-Americans, six All-Americans, seven All-Americans gives you an opportunity to win a national championship. And you probably need a little help from some other teams beating Iowa. They had obviously a good team too. But, you know, I felt very confident each guy on our team could win a national title and maybe some were even more favorites than others. But it's heartbreaking. I'm still crushed over it. And not only, not for myself, I mean, of course, partly for myself, but for the whole team, Ray Anderson, Don Bakke, Scotty Graham, every donor, our board members, our alumni. I mean, that was devastating. This was the year that we had targeted. Um, so it hurt. Maybe just the one last thing, though, is, um, you know, we don't expect to dip down anymore now that we're into the sixth year. And really, we've got some recruits loaded in the back behind. We've got an elite transfer right now coming in. So I'm very confident it's not a, a place where we make a, a large dip down, if any. Now I expect us to compete year in and year out to be in that top 10, top five and compete for a national championship. But to say my heart w wasn't broken, it was. Yeah, I, yeah, like, like I said, I, I, I can't, um, I can't imagine what that feeling is. And you guys want to chime in, Anthony, you know, here you, you, you've been, you've been pushing for so long here and had your opportunity, I feel like, and, and you, you're going to get another year, you know, which is, which is awesome. And I know you're, you're looking forward to uh, trying to make an Olympic team and everything. And that being pushed back another year changes the way things are, how people are recruited, how people are redshirted. Uh, Anthony, you want to jump on that at all? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely really hard when, when I found out the season was getting canceled. Um, but, you know, it's, it's part of life, and it's, like, part of history. It, like, it's happened since the beginning. Um, so all we can do is just make the best out of it and stay positive. Um, I've learned from the past where I've, like, had a negative mindset. Whenever things went wrong, I would just be negative for a while. And I've learned, you know, through experience – uh, that's not the, that's not the right way to do things. So I make sure I stay positive and I look at the bright side. Wrestling is not everything, and that's what this quarantine is doing for us. Also, it's like it's letting us see a different perspective and um, showing us that there's a lot more to it. So um, yeah, I mean it was hard, but um, I mean it worked. It, it I feel like it's going to work out in the end. And then the Olympic the Olympic trials being uh, postponed. Uh, that was tough too, but in my opinion, it gives me a little bit more of an advantage. It gives me an, another year uh, to get better, um, you know, to make that Olympic team. Yeah, and you know, you got guys like Frank who are like, "All right, I'm hanging it up. I don't want another year." All right, Frank. All right, Frank. You didn't want to stick around trying to get this next one. Yeah, I'll just stick to helping Anthony at this point. That sounds more fun. There you go. There you go. Well, and 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 going back to your point, Zeke. Um, recruiting like and, and knowing having coach there you get re good recruits the fact that you can take them the entire time four or five years and still have a team at the end that's not an easy task 
I mean, we, you always see these kids come in out of high school that are, that are all everything. Um, everyone knows them and then they really don't, they don't reach what they need to be or they end up flunking out or something happens. You don't have them at the end. And then you get a guy like Cordell who no one really knew. And this guy was getting ready to win a national title. So, I mean, I, I think we were primed. I think you did everything right. Um, I was, I was hurt just, you know, as much, obviously the seniors, but guys like Brandon Courtney and Cordell and Teamer, I mean, having a chance to be a four-time All-American, four-time national champ, who knows, you know? So everybody, everybody was affected. So you can't say like, well, at least they get three more years. Yeah, but you don't get that chance to be a four-timer. Um, you know? I just, yeah, every, everything has to line up. You know, often if you look through history, number one recruiting classes, they don't always finish number one five years later. This class did. It was as good out of high school uh, as it was in this final year, better. You know, to have three All-Americans, four All-Americans, and one recruiting class, you're lucky when you get one. So this group really led the way. Uh, they, they set the tone. They led the pace. And so, uh, you know, my heart bleeds for them every day. But like they said, it's, uh, you know, we got to live and learn. We've got to move on. And the future is really, really bright right now. I mean, there's a guy on the call I saw with a big giant hair heavyweight on our team freshman that's floating on this call too, that, you know, a lot of people are excited to see Colton Schultz, Russell and Ramo Clebo and, you know, Trey Munoz and Belton. And, you know, there's a good young group in that room that's excited. It reminds me a lot of Tanner, Josh, Anthony, Zahid, Maruka, that group. So, uh, this is when special things happen, when you have tremendous senior leadership and post-college, post-Olympic, or post-college, pre-Olympic athletes in your room mentoring and guiding, but also those young guys chipping at the heels of those guys saying, hey, I want to I challenge them, I want to compete with them in practice and ultimately take the throne over. So that's when great things happen. Yeah, Zeke, real quick, could you, is there any chance that we get a, uh, a, a, a lineup for next season? I mean, we're already, we're already kind of curious. How uh, gonna uh, well, I can't, obviously, I can't tell you the recruits, so I couldn't put them in, but I, I think you're basically looking at, uh, you know, Brandon Courtney at 25 and Ramo. We're trying to sort out Ramo, Clevo, and Belton for 33, 41, 49, but Ramo seems to be the smallest of the group. I think Julian and, and Cleveland are kind of how we're sorting out 41, 49. Uh, Crooks, you know, I think his time is over at 41, and we're going to see him up at 49, strong and healthy. Uh, obviously, six, 57, 65, 74 is a conversation we need to have uh, between Anthony Jacori and um, Anthony Jacori and um, uh, Trey Munoz. But I think they've already sorted it out. They just haven't told me what they're thinking. Uh, but I have a feeling I know. And then uh, 84 is looking like Cade right now, Belche and. You know, Cordell's on track for a national championship in 97. He's getting ready. And obviously, we got uh, pound for pound number one recruit in America last year, Colton Schultz, who's uh, obviously in the finals of the Olympic. Uh, he's in the Olympic team qualifying event and has been vying for a bid on the world and Olympic team at the senior level. And he'll hunker down the heavyweight spot. And there's a couple kids in the line, other kids in the room, too, that, you know, I didn't mention. But, you know, they're probably saying, Coach didn't mention me, so I'm, I'm going to show him. And I think that's great because inevitably we've got to have competition in the room. It's got to get tough. It's got to be physical. Uh, it's got to be demanding. And there's got to be a competitive fire. And uh, I think we're going to see some of that, especially when we bring the two new kids coming into the program. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Cordell, no, no, not dropping to 84. You're happy at 97? Uh, yeah, I'm extremely happy, G. Like, it's really kind of like my natural weight. So I don't plan on cutting no more weight till I'm told to. And they ain't told me to, so. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, yeah, I know we're excited for next season. Um, well, I think it's time to, to, and if everyone sees, if they open up their chat, we can get some questions from everybody uh, that is here. And I, can, and I have some questions that you had, some people have sent in. Um, so I'm going to go through some of these for our athletes and, and coaches. Um, I've got some I'm trying to decipher because it, I printed it and it printed a little weird. But um, – so Cliff Nefrata, who I actually coached with at Arcadia High School with Christian Pagdaleo, I think you know Christian. We all got together and coached this year. Uh, Cliff asked Brandon Courtney, Brandon, we've been watching you in Arizona for a long time. Um, you made a huge jump in your first, first year to your second. Another jump like this could have you challenged for a top five spot in, your, uh, in the weight class. 
Do you think you'll be adding more skills or just refining your skills over the next year? Uh, both. I think, uh, well, I didn't have the year I wanted my redshirt freshman year. And I, I think that was mainly because of injury. And this year, I've gotten a lot better on top and bottom. And I've tuned some things up. But I don't even think I came close to my peak. I think next year I'm going to be a whole different animal. Uh, like I tell my friends, the dragon's going to come out. And it ain't, it's, it's game time next year. I want to be on top of that podium. So I think I'm going to, for, for both, I think I'm going to tune some things up and develop some new skills as well. And I, and I feel like it's too bad that Zeke's, Zeke's got horrible knees and can't get on the mat with you like he used to because he, <laughs> he used to scrap with some of my teammates and you would have been – you guys have been fun to watch. What do you say, Zeke? Yeah. Oh, I still throw legs on him. He knows it. <laughs> <laughs> he gets that, yeah. I'll give him that. He's getting good at getting out of him now, though, I have to say. I can't quite hold him down like I used to. That puts it. So uh, Cliff Nefrata also has this for uh, Anthony and Cordell. And I'm going to have you uh, answer first, Cordell. Who has a better blast double? Oh. Definitely you? me. Now, <laughs> Anthony, what do you say to that? I have a better blast double and more variety. <laughs> I, think I, feel, I think I feel the same way on that one. Um, let's get here. Tanner Hall. Tanner, I want to talk to you real quick. We had a question come in. Um, really about your future and the Olymp you know, making the Olympic team, world team. How much longer do you feel like you want to stick around with wrestling and, and, and making these teams now? Do you have a, uh, like a time frame? Are you going to go through 2024? I mean, I don't have a specific time frame yet. You know, there's so many variables. I think after college, it depends, you know, your health and lots of other things. Um, of course, I plan on sticking around for a long time and training with, you know, a lot of the good guys we got here helping out Cordell and, um, of course, Schultz, Colton Schultz. Um, get ready for what they need to get ready for and also using them to help me get better and continue to pursue world and Olympic teams through that time. Uh, but I don't have a set time. Like I want to wrestle till X date. I think that really just depends on, you know, the type of success I'm having for sure. Um, Amanda Keynes, if you guys all know Amanda, she's here. She Tanner, she wants to know what your uh, most memorable time was here at ASU over all your years here, your 15 years that you've been at ASU. Over all my years here? Most um, memorable experience time. I think it'd be really hard to narrow it down actually to a, a specific time. You know, you, you have so much, so many great times here. I, I, the Penn State duel definitely has to be in there as one of them. You know, I don't think there's anything ever like that. Um, you know, becoming an All-American, becoming a Pac-12 champion, you know, all those things are super special in their own right too. And I, and I don't think you can say that one's greater than the other because they're all just kind of a little bit different um, in their own category. And so I would just say that, you know, that's probably the – the general ones that are probably the best times. And of course, I mean, there's thousands of things that happen in the room on a daily basis that, you know, are the best time. You just, it, it's life, you know, you just got to take the little moments and the big moments when they come. Zeke, let me hit you with this one. Um, Dean Donaher from PA. Will you guys be scheduling any, uh, any trips back East Lehigh, Penn, Drexel in the coming years, PA high school is the best. Also, will you still be recruiting those PA guys. Um, after after the studs that we pulled out of there before. Hey, hey Dean, absolutely. You know that. You know, I, of course, we saw you at the Lehigh meet. Uh, gr glad to have uh, Sun Devil back there rooting for us in uh, what we would call enemy territory. You know, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, it's a second home to us. I mean, look at Shields and, you know, uh, you know obviously Ja'Cory. And it, it's great when we can go back to the East Coast. Obviously, we're bringing – Clebo and uh, Ramo coming back, you know, obviously Jacory from there as well. Um, so it looks like right now we may be, and it's not a done deal, so it's certainly not quotable yet. But as of now, it looks like we've got a deal to go to Pitt. Lehigh's coming to us. Um, we not sure North Carolina is supposed to come to us, but we may go there again in a row. Um, and, I'm, and we, there's a preseason tournament, the Journeyman Classic, that we went to last year that we tentatively have on the schedule to go this year. And then, of course, we got to go to Cordell's hometown. We're going to the Midlands in Chicago this year, too. So a lot of those things are uh, – they're, they're, they're pretty locked in. Um, and then uh, Missouri will come to us. That's a done deal at the end of the season in Lehigh at the end of the season. Uh, 
I, I, you know, Missouri's a team that we've got on the radar for the Pac-12 coming down the next couple of years, uh, joining the conference. Not a done deal again, but it's something we're working on. So uh, that's a little bit of the schedule, Dean, and uh, it's always great to see you when we get out there. All right. Well, um, let me get this one to you, Frank. You've you've gotten to watch our guys um, through this season. Have you been able to watch any any tape or, or been online to watch any of these guys? And anyone that you're just just can't wait to get your hands on that to, to, it's going to fit your style of coaching and somebody you think that can uh, that you can help you know personally bring along. Yeah, I mean, even some of the guys that are going to be in the club next year. You know, I've watched Tanner. You know, obviously followed the Heat and. Josh and all those guys as well. So I'm looking forward to being able to build relationships with those guys and help them in their freestyle career. And, you know, I've known, I've watched Ja'Cory and I've followed him for a long time from a distance. And, you know, I've just always really respected the way he wrestles. You know, I like his confidence and, you know, I just like his ability to have fun out there and let it fly. So he's a guy, you know, I think we'll have a, you know, we'll have a real competitiveness in the room and, a good, good relationship once I get there. Um, and Anthony Valencia, and you know, I followed him last year a lot and just really saw his improvement and saw his progression. And, you know, even just the short time I've been around him, I can already tell he's serious about winning and he's serious about making improvements. So, you know, he's another guy. And, you know, I think Cordell right now, he probably thinks he's stronger than me, but, you know, eventually he'll realize the Gorilla Hulk strong. And, you know, Cordell's another guy that, you know, I'm looking forward to, learning more about him, you know, he was in a great position last year to win the national tournament. Um, you know, had that season played out and had things worked out the way they were supposed to, I think Cordell will be the first person to tell you, you know, he believed he was going to win the nationals. So those are the kind of guys, you know, I'm real excited to help them in any way I can and continue to kind of learn everybody and build relationships. And another guy, Colton Schultz, you know, I remember when I was at the last chance qualifier, and uh, me and my father were, look, were sitting there watching him wrestle. And it was just, we knew just from watching him from a distance that this kid gets it. You know, he's, he's the total package. You know, he's got the mindset. He's out there wrestling with enthusiasm, lighthearted, relaxed. So I'm interested to know more about him and build some relationships with him and, you know, help him in any way as well. Um, let me move this one on. Let me get over here to uh... – to Ja'Cory Teamer. Ja'Cory, uh, anyone that you emulated your style coming out of New York or, or, or growing up and, and really was someone special to you that you wanted to kind of emulate or, you know, you just your own, making your own stuff up? <laughs> you know Anthony makes all his stuff up. Yeah. Um, I don't really – I watch a lot of wrestling, but, like, I don't see anyone that I can compare to, like, like – I don't know. I kind of have my own style. I don't really, like, try to copy anyone else. I watch a lot of foreign guys, but, like, I don't like copying other people, I guess. And that, that question was from JP, John Tolfin, a uh, big, big supporter of ours and, and a big fan of yours. Um, let's see here. Cordell. Now, this is from Frank Molinero. Oh, my God. Cordell, you were recruited to become a leader at Arizona State. Um... Was this more of a question or just – I think this was just you saying, let's get ready to go, right, Frank? No, I said, Cordell, what is your greatest quality as a person and what is your number one thing that you need to focus on wrestling-wise going into next season? Okay, so my greatest quality as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, what do I think people think of me? Well – I think I'm like one of the most compatible people, like people know. Like, I, uh, to my knowledge, there's not anyone on the team that I think has ever really had a problem with me. Like, I just, whatever environment I'm in, I kind of just fit in. You know, I know my role and all that. And uh, it's, I'm just easy going. That's just me as a person. Like, I'm relaxed and I'm chill. But, um, and then the second part, it got to be mat wrestling. Like, when I just look at myself, like, my entire life, even when I was a little kid, I would just beat a lot of kids because I could pick neutral and take everybody down, like, ten times. But definitely, re like, refining. You know, I need to learn how to turn. Like, I think I average, like, maybe six back points a year, and that's not okay. <laughs> so I definitely got to do better than that. 
Yeah, you could do yeah. better. Getting a comfortable, being, um, you know, able to pick top, ride someone out if I need to, or go down and escape whenever I need to. That shouldn't be like, you know, a question mark with me. So I think that's the biggest thing I need to improve on. Cool. Sounds oh, good. We've got another question here, Daryl Ekman. Please ask the wrestlers how some of the supporters can specifically help them. If you are an NCAA wrestler, you cannot specifically get help unless someone just cheers for you in a wrestling match. But some of these guys, and Zeke, maybe you can re, uh, go into this. Some of these guys that are going to wrestle freestyle and, um, you know, continuing, continuing their career and no longer on scholarship, you know, how can they help maybe fundraise for their next years and, and something like that? So, yeah, yeah. You know, it's when, and again, when we talk to that first recruiting class and, and even today, it's the same thing. We tell the, the kids, the guys on our team and their families, ASU is in a four to five year program. This is an eight to 10 year plan. You know, there's really no ceiling in our program. As good as you want to become, you can become. Obviously, you come here, you get an excellent education. You win national championships. When you graduate, you work on a master's degree, a PhD, and if God's given you the ability to be the best in the world, you can do that here, as good as you want to become. There's no ceiling at Arizona State. There's world-class coaches, there's world-class training partners, and you've got the number one wrestling club in the world eight miles down the road to help support you. For this group, and, and obviously, appreciate, there's so many people that have supported us throughout the years in so many ways, including financially is, you know, it's, we, we need help, whether it's help to ASU and fundraising to do the different things that we do, or we're helping our post-college athletes, uh, because now Josh, Tanner, and Zaheed won't, won't be on scholarship anymore, so we'll start funding them with a stipend to help them work with their Olympic dreams, but trust me, it's not very much money, it, you know, obviously pays their bills, it's, it's almost like a scholarship and now they get a small check, but every dollar that people donate helps go towards their salaries, uh, and helps goes towards um, their training and competition expenses. So in a nutshell, Aaron, that's how we do it. We either, you know, we take them from call it cradle to grave from the moment they get to ASU to the moment they step off the Olympic podium, we have a plan and a system for that. And it takes everybody's help. Well, and, and, and we, if you check over in your chat over there, Derek, um, he, he has kind of put a little bit more interested in philanthropically supporting Sun Devil Wrestling. Make a donation online. We have our link there. Um, you can also email Derek to his spot if you're interested in that and helping our wrestlers really currently, you know, can open the program and also in the future. Um, Zeke, Adam Friedman has a question for you. My former teammate, you coached him. Uh, what do you think about the behavior of wrestlers today as opposed to when you were in school? Uh, well, Adam, I, I tell you, it's on video now. Back in the old days, there were no cameras, so you could get away with a lot more. And the people that found that out the most are the Russians. But it's, uh, I think the behavior, uh, the kids are more scrutinized now. So I would say the behavior's gotten better. But in the moment where somebody makes a mistake and hacks out, it gets captured, right? And that gets used as the tool for learning and, and, and behaving. But wrestlers in all, in all Aaron, or uh, Adam, I think, you know, there, there's a sense of um, honor and respect. I think there's a sense of, you know, we're recruiting kids with great character. We, I believe the defining marker of success is character. People that are trustworthy, loyal, honorable, disciplined, uh, dedicated, However, uh, even good people make mistakes, right, Adam? I mean, we, we went to, uh, you know, you went to school here and all of us, and, you know, there's life challenges uh, for all young people. But I think the behavior has been good. I think the, the kids on our team, I think, have a great level of respect for the process and how to do things right. I think we've got tremendous leadership and character on our team. So I feel really good about our team in specific. Yeah, I, uh, I would agree. And I think, you know, our seniors, right, that are here with us today are, are two that exemplify that. Don't you, Zeke and Tanner and, and Josh? I mean, I, I talked to Adam the other day. He's like, man, I love that Josh Shields. I talked to his dad. His dad. He's the coolest guy in the world. So everyone loves Josh. Everyone loves Tanner. And it's really because of really the, who they are as, char you know, their character, I guess. Would you agree? Yeah, I do. I, I think it's what we look for. You know, obviously, you need to be in the ballpark of talent. And I love world-class speed and strength and 
if you want a lot of championships, we're really we're looking for people that want to live the lifestyle because ultimately that's what it takes to get to the top. And then when you have world-class ability on top of that character, that's when real special things happen. That's when you start to see NCAA championship, world Olympic medals, the guys that are graduating with master's degrees and going out and make, being the future leaders and great family members, uh, you know, and men of character and leaders in their community. It just, it's how it works. It's pretty simple. Well, let me get one more guy in here. Um, we've not talked to, to our, the heavyweight of the future for ASU. Um, Colton Schultz, we uh, just want to hear from you a little bit. What are you looking forward to most? How hard was it redshirting this year? Um, you know, getting to, getting to train with a guy like Tanner. You had some great training partners in there. And, and, and knowing that Tanner didn't have the best training partners, you know, some of his career. I mean, at one point he was drilling with, with Blake Stoffer. I mean, working out. And, and Blake was giving him his best match in the room at 184 pounds. So, Colton Schultz, can you chime in here and, and really your future at ASU and what you're looking forward to? Yeah, um, this year was a blast being a being a redshirt. It was kind of fun just uh, just getting to focus on training and being able to support the team from the sidelines. It was kind of fun. Um, it was a different experience for me for sure, but it was a it was a good one. Um, and we had a really good room for heavyweight. Um, being able to wrestle with Tanner and Mike and Garrett on a daily was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'm excited. We're real excited to see uh see where we can go with new coaches and everything. Uh, a lot of changes going on, but be good i'm excited um be able to throw some people be fun <laughs> that's uh that, that, that's kind of what we want to hear we're looking forward to watching you russell zeke um i've got a couple of questions here for you one was the impact of rescheduling the olympics and how that kind of changes things guys taking olympic red shirts um you know some of these guys that, that took an olympic red shirt this year I'm hearing, you know, not just at ASU obviously, but but across the country are, will not be taking it for 2021. How do you how do you go with something like that? You know, first off, hugely hugely disappointed. Uh, looking forward to going to the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Uh, as it relates to Arizona State, I think it makes us better. I think Colton gets another year of physical maturity. Zahid gets the opportunity to wrestle again, and I also think the team's going to change her as a result of it. Uh, I've been doing this a long, long time, and I think it's going to hurt guys like Burroughs and Dake and Taylor. You know, they're 29, 30, and 31 years old. And I'm telling you, I retired at 31, and I was – I went a long, long time. Frank, I think you're 31. I mean, the ability to compete at the highest level, this is a young man's game, and it's getting younger and younger. Uh, so I feel really good about our chances. They got better, uh, but I – I'm disappointed, you know, for all the athletes around the world, but America will always be strong. We will always be good, uh, but I do think it's going to change the team. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, we've got a cool little message here from Emily Bub. Emily is in the, uh, is a female wrestler in a room. Um, um, she's got a question um, addressed to really anyone who wants to pick this up, but um, let's see here. Where did I go? Do you have any suggestions for a wrestler starting out? So somebody who's just getting into the sport, little kid. Let's go with Anthony, Anthony Valencia here. Any suggestions for a kid who, who's just getting into the sport, maybe as a parent who took him to a room and said, go for it? Yeah, I would just say mostly uh, staying consistent. Once you start, keep, keep going, keep the ball rolling. Because um, once you create that habit, it gets easier. Uh, you make it a routine and, and you know, you're consistent with it. You're, you're going to progress and continue getting better and better. Um, that's my advice. Um, I'll add into this. Um, when I started out wrestling, I wasn't as good. Obviously, I lost a lot. So just be patient. Your time will come, and you keep getting better as you go on. Good. Anyone else? Anyone else want to chime into that? Yeah, I, I would just say have fun. I mean, especially if you're just getting started. I mean, wrestling is a super tough sport. And there's lots of ups and downs. And I would just say to make sure that you have fun because practices aren't always fun. So just make sure that, you know, when there are times to have fun, that you're enjoying it. I think that goes even through college, right? I mean, like, yeah. I know that for me, when I was, you know, I got the coach there and wrestle there, the best time to me was actually being in the room with the guys and, and, having, and having that fun, the road trips and competing. Competing was just, you know, icing on the cake, I guess, but really – that short amount of time to get to be in a room and working out or something special. Yeah, you know, Josh snored sometimes when we were in the room together, but, man, eh, I get over it.
No response there, Tanner. Right. Let's say this, Josh Shields. This is to Colton Schultz from you. What do you, uh, anything to say to him? You know, any, any words of advice from a senior to a, to a freshman? To Colton? Yes. My advice would be uh, to let it fly. Um, you never, ever want to look back on a match, whether it be big or small, and say, I wish I could have done more. Um, so my advice would be, you know, just to let it fly. And he does that super well in Greco. And uh, to, to stick to what works, but also to build on your game. And so I would say just keep doing what you're doing. But uh, whatever it takes to wrestle free, uh, to let it fly, I would focus on that. Great advice. Yeah, I love it. Um, Coming down, time to, to, to wind it down. I did get a text from Don Bakke, the, uh, the, the legend of the, uh, of the athletic administration there. Don is asking that everyone watching think of one or two people to invite so we can grow this for the next time we do it. Um, Zeke, I, I, I think you plan on having more of these. Um, hopefully we're out of quarantine and we can still get together like this. I think it's a great thing. and I think we all bought stock in Zoom, so we should be going up. Is that right, Bob? Bob Williams, you there? Bob didn't unmute. There I am. Yes, I'm hey. here. Bob, it's, right. it's a great time to do this. What do you say? Perfect. I love it. Great, great creative thinking by, uh, I think it was established by Dan Sager had on a member of our board had a lot to do with put, putting this together along with Derek and, and another and Colton. So uh, it's, this is a great thing. Absolutely. Agreed. Awesome. Well, Derek and Colton, thank you so much. Zeke, I want you to take this time to wrap it up and, uh, and we'll sign everybody out. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Aaron. First off, Aaron, thanks to you for putting this together and, and all the administration uh, and our entire athletic department staff. I know a lot of people put a lot of time and energy into this. You know what we did? We, we did this exclusively for you. Right, we invited our closest donors and our former alumni to get on a call with our Pac-12 champs, our new coach, uh, and really just to get an opportunity to listen and talk to our men. I have the blessing every day to listen to them talk. We do joke of the day before practice, as they know. And Shields, you might have to do joke of the day before we get off. But we, I get to know them every day. You don't always get to do that. Uh, you have a tremendous team that you're supporting. These young men and men are going to move on and have successful and great lives and impact many people, including their families and their community. It's such a special moment. And really, I would be remiss if I didn't thank the Sun Devil Wrestling Executive Board. All of the members, I believe, are on the call today, Joe, Bobby, Dan, Roger, and Jason. Your leadership gives us the opportunity to create this platform, to connect our, our wrestlers to the community, and we need all of your help if we're going to build a championship program. Wrestling has a seat at the table. Wrestling sits at the leadership table within the athletic department and our community because of you and the men that put their butts on the line every time they step out into that circle with a lot of people watching them and nobody out in that center of the circle but themselves. But they know they have you in the stands to help and so we just need your help. We've got a lot of initiatives coming up. Uh, I don't want to hit you over the stick, uh, over the head with a stick on fundraising, but we do need your financial support. But more importantly, we just need your love. And we need your, uh, you know, just your love pouring over the team to make us better, make us great. And uh, let's kick some butt. Let's move forward. Let's uh, let the Sun Devil legend live on. And maybe after this, uh, I believe social media may post this, but if they don't, Please get online, get on social media and say, man, that town hall was great. This one's closed. It's by invitation only. We are going to open up to a public one, but we just want to do this one for you because you matter to us. And so we just appreciate everything you do. So uh, Aaron, thank you uh, uh, again, uh, team, men. Can't wait to get back in the room. Frank, welcome aboard. And to our board and all our fans and wrestling fans, thanks a bunch. Aaron, we good? Let's yeah, give a fork everybody. Fork up. Frank, when you do the when you do the pitchfork, the finger has to be spread. I saw you do this once, and I was I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. my wife my wife yelled at me for that. She she grew up in the pack. <laughs>
Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. What's up, Jones? <laughs> All right, guys, have a good one. Clifford, thank you. Paige, yeah. thank you. Colton and Scott, I see all you. Emily, thank you. Joe, appreciate it. Todd, Scott, I see you. Thank you. Ray Adams, coach, good seeing you. Forks up. Kellen, thanks. Thanks, Chip. Elliot, 